Welcome back everybody, my name is Philip and today we're going to have a look at the photo editing software Lumina 3. So in this video we're going to go over everything. We're going to have a look at a couple of example images. We're going to go through the interfaces for the library part and the editing part. And of course we're going to go a little bit into efficient workflows that you can use to speed up your editing with Luminar. Note that this video comes together with a very elaborate article that is of course listed and linked down there in the description where I also go into keyboard shortcuts and even more workflows for you to organize your images and edit them more efficiently with Luminar. Now if at the end the software sounds like something that is uh, obviously amazing for you and you may decide to buy it, do make sure to use the link down there in the description and the promo code Let's Image to save further 10%. Here's the cool thing, thanks to the awesome people at Skyloom who actually made that software, I'm able to give away a couple of versions of it. So if you want to have it for free and totally free and like no cost, stick around until the end of the video to see what you have to do. Awesome, enough blah blah, let's jump right in. So let's really start at the basics and find out how do we get our images into Luminar 3 for the first time. This is Luminar. Right now there is like literally nothing in there because I have not actually imported any pictures. Now the cool thing is the way it works is that you just have to tell Luminar where your images are on your computer, on a hard drive or in a pen drive. So in order to get stuff in here I have prepared a tiny folder which is called Luminar Library. So what I'm going to do I'm going to go to the right hand side to folder. I'm going to hit the little plus button and I'm going to find my Lumina library. I'm just going to double click it and it's going to start importing these images. The fact that you can just import folders like that and you can add more if you want to is fantastic for me because that means the software is not creating a separate library. It just works with the folders that you already have on your computer or hard drive or wherever they may be, even the cloud. So that is it. Congratulations. You have already imported your images into Lumina simply by adding the folder on the right hand side. You could have also done that from the top left here and go to add folder, but both do the exact same thing and I just find it more useful to stick with that panel right here. Let's go around that editing interface a little bit more in detail and find out what we can really do here. Now on the top bar you have a couple of options. Starting on the left you can add folders and stuff like that as I've already well said. Here the next step is you can switch between a sort of a tiled view to a single view, right? So you can switch back and forth if you want to rather click through your images like that, but we're going to go there in just a moment. Here you can say which folder are you currently looking at? Are you looking at the folder that I have just added? And if you would have more folders, they would also be visible here. Or do I look at all images across all my folders? Cool. Let's go here. So what we can do there is just simply hide the side panel if we feel like we don't like it. I normally have it on just because why wouldn't I, right? And the next step, you can choose what is the thumbnail size that you see your images with right here. So largest is, well, the largest. If you go medium, your images would just be a little bit smaller as it makes total sense. Alternatively, you can also use the plus symbols or the minus symbol to do the exact same thing. So I personally kind of like the largest for reasons that I don't really understand. I just like to see my images large. Moving further to the right, you have a couple of options. One is library, edit and info. Now edit, as the name suggests, lets you go into editing view. So if I hit edit or D on my keyboard for develop, I'm going to be in the developing mode, mode, which right now is super confusing. So let's switch back to the library by hitting G for gallery. Ah, much simpler. I love it. The last option is info and info simply has, well, information about the image that you have selected. And on the very right hand side, you can simply export the images, share it, whatever you need to do, the usual stuff. So if we go down a little bit further, here was the place where I had just added the folder, right? So you could have as many folders as you want to. And the cool thing is you can also separate them out even further your images. Say you are a wedding photographer, for instance, and you need to sort your images by client or by session or whatever it might be. Then you have the chance to throw all the images into one folder, right? So you plug in your hard drive or SD card. I would throw them all into Luminar library and I would just select them here within Luminar, right click and would then say create album. So if I do that, I'm going to get an untitled album. I'm going to call it uh, client one, because why not? And if I do that, it's going to create an album for that with these pictures that I had selected before. So you can throw them all into one folder and then in theory, separate them out by using albums. Now, what you can also do here on the top, you have all photos and recently edit. 
recently added are, well, the ones that you have recently added, but all photos is nice because if you open up that tree structure, you can get your pictures sorted by year and month and day. So that is pretty awesome because then you know if you had a certain travel or whatever, you can just go back to that time if needed. So in short, the right hand side right here is used to organize your images and well, move back and forth between different folders or albums that you have created. Now I'm gonna get rid of this album for now because I don't really need it. So I'm gonna say delete and delete album. Your images are not actually deleted. They would only be deleted if I delete them from my actual folder. And of course, as I said, in the very center, you have your images. So these are just simply thumbnails, live thumbnails from the images that you have in your folder or whatever you have your images in. There are generally two different views available. One is that tiled one and the other one you have quickly seen before, which I can change on the top left hand right here. So here I can go basically go to a single view. And if I do that, I'm automatically going to switch over to the editing mode. So it is essentially just a shortcut to the editing mode, which I like though, because I like that you have these little tiny thumbnails on the side here where you can quickly go through and change in between them. For now, just to make it less confusing, let's stick with the actual tiled one and the actual library view. Now you have a couple of options as to how to sort your photos and also show the ones that you're actually interested in. On the top right, right here, you can say what kind of images would you like to be shown. So you can have all the ones, your favorites, your star rated ones or your color rated ones, or even the originals compared to the edits. That is also something you can do. And if you need to sort them further, you can then sort them by capture time, editing time, rating, color label, and so on and so forth, up to even file size. And uh, that's actually quite incredible because you can really sort it in any way that you see fit for your personal workflow. So now that we have our images in, now it would be kind of great to see how can we organize them further, identifying the very good ones that we want to edit and identifying the ones that we don't. And that is where Lumina's star rating system comes into play. Let me show you. So I throw all my images, let's say, into my Lumina library, but I only, of course, want to have the ones in a quick view that I actually like, that actually worked and that I know I can edit. So for those, what you can simply do is click on one image, right? Just click it. And then on your keyboard, use your number keys one to five, including zero, so zero to five, I guess, to give them a quick star rating. Have a look at the bottom left right here. If I hit the four, for example, this picture is going to get four stars right away, right? If I then use my arrow keys on the keyboard, I can continue, go through these photos and can quickly give them star ratings based on my opinion. Now, the reason that you want to do that is once I have given them the star rating, I can then show only those photos, for instance, let's say four stars or more, and uh, make sure that I only have those in my view fields here. Why would I do that? Well, if you now go to the editing mode, you will only have these images that you have selected prior with that star rating to edit, right? So let's switch back to the library mode here, and we can also go back to show all photos. Here we go. So it is quite efficient. You throw your pictures in, you give them a rating or a star label, anything like that, and then you edit only those that you are currently interested in. Let's say your five stars, because these are obviously amazing. And then later down the line, you may need to have to go down to the three stars and edit those in any way that you want. If you don't want to use your keyboard, even though it is quite efficient, you can also simply right click and here you can also set rating, you can set color labels, you can set a flag and so on and so forth. If you're an HDR photographer, you will also like that you can simply um, select three of your images, right click and then open those all in Aurora HDR if that is what you're using. I have a full guide on Aurora HDR 2019, so do make sure you check that out as well if that is your jam because this is definitely mine. Or of course you throw them in Photoshop or whatever other software you want. The really cool thing about the organization here is you don't actually have to leave Luminar to deal with the folder on your computer. Say I need a subfolder for reasons that are completely up to you. I can just simply click on the little plus button next to folder, click on new folder, call it whatever, literally whatever, and hit the create button. Now, if I do that, it's gonna create that folder in my other folder that I have already here. So I'm gonna say add folder. And now if I go to my main folder, I can select a couple of images if that is what I feel like and could drag and drop them into the folders that I see fit, right? So within Luminar, you can simply change the, the, the image files uh, to any place that you like and they're gonna change in real time on your computer as well. Similar, if you wanna get rid of something, simply right click and you actually move it to the trash just as you would with any file that you want to get rid of on your computer. Beautiful, so now that we have the pictures in Lumina 3, we know how to organize them efficiently. Let's jump over and have a look as to how do we get to the editing part and what can we actually do there. Now for that, as I said, you can either select an image and then hit the D button on your keyboard or you just swap to the editing little button right here on the top left. 
First of all, what you may note is that if I click on an image on the side, it's going to come up here. All your images are going to be here on the right hand, uh, on the left hand side, as long as you have imported them. The neat thing is even here, I can use my up and down arrow keys, for instance, to go to the next image and then use my number keys on my keyboard to apply a different star rating, as you can see right here at the lower uh, well end of the screen. So if I hit the four key, I'm going to give four stars. I move on to the next image. I give it a two, move on to the next. I'm going to give it a five because it has one and it's fantastic. But you see what I mean. So you can quickly go even through here and change any kind of rating that you see fit. Now, you'll see that I got a couple of additions to the interface now, and let's go through them step by step to understand what's going on here. First of all, once you go into the develop mode or the editing mode, on the top you have a couple of more options available. One of them is, first of all, do you want to show that film strip on the side here? Do you want to have the current photo actions or side panels? So just what do you want to actually see? Now, this one is a very big one because if you hit it, you're going to see you get the looks that are yeah, sort of pre-installed uh, in Lumina 3. These are essentially like presets. They just call them looks in here and uh, you can apply them to your image and then edit the image further if that is what you like. It comes with a ton of different looks depending on the category that you like. I usually just leave it at all. And uh, yeah, you can see if I scroll through here, it's going to live update the little previews with the edit that the preview uh, that the look would essentially apply to the image. Cool. So let's get rid of this for now because we don't really need it right now. Now, the next step is the percent. So that's just how far do you want to zoom in. And here you have the little eyeball or the before and after slider. Both of them just simply show you the original if you have made any edits, which I haven't yet. Further, you have the tools. So if you want to crop, free transform, clone stamp, erase, and so on, it's going to be right here under the tools button. And the rest is the same as it was in the library view. Now, the editing in Illumina 3 is highly developed, and I obviously do not want to spend an hour going into every single adjustment that you can do. Now, the cool thing is you have things from Photoshop, such as layers and blend modes, if, that, if you want to use them. So you can add a new layer, let's say. You're going to have a clean workspace, and then you can decide which of the I think around like 50 or 60 different options that you have to actually edit your images. Uh, just pick the one that you like. Let's say I'm going to go for something essential such as develop. I don't know. You hit it and it's going to be added to this particular workspace right here, right? So now I can make any adjustments that I want. Say I want to push it even further into the yellow with a little bit of magenta that looks horrible. But let's just assume that is exactly what we love to do. Then you simply do that right here. You can then, because it's a layer, adjust the blend mode uh, as you like with live previews, or you can just simply use the little brush symbol, paint the adjustment in, use a radial mask, gradient masks, and so on and so forth, as you might have seen in Photoshop as well. The neat thing is you don't have to assemble all the different filters from that list that you have just seen, or all the different, let's don't call them filters because that implies everything is automatic. They are simply adjustments, right? Some of them are filters, but most of them are adjustments. Uh, to make your life a little bit easier, you can also click on custom workspace, clear workspace, and then you can pick one of the pre-prepared workspaces for you. Say a professional, for example, would have the normal developer mod module, you would have the denoise module, saturation, and so on and so forth, sort of pre-populated for you that you can write, uh, jump right in and edit as much as you need. Now, the nice thing is whatever adjustments you make here, say we're going to add some denoise as well, because we can, I guess. Uh, if I now use my arrow key and I go down, for example, I'm going to switch to the next image automatically. And doing that, it really allows me to go and fly through the edits very, very quickly, because I do not have to go back and forth between any kind of folders or whatever. They are just right there. And if I pick the right ones with the star rating, I'm going to work on the beauties first and then go to the not so beautiful ones. Now, if I want to copy a certain adjustment, I can also do that. I can simply on the left hand side here, do right click on an image that has a certain adjustment, go to the adjustments and then copy those adjustments and paste the adjustments onto a different image if that is what I feel like. If you are a wedding photographer, for example, you may need to apply the same adjustments very quickly to a set of 400 pictures or something like that. No problem at all. Just simply select the ones that you need to have a certain adjustment, adjust them in one, right? And then simply uh, right click adjustment and sync the adjustments up between all of them. You'll see that presets or looks in Lumina work very easy as well. The only thing you have to do is, well, first of all, see them, I guess. Uh, and then let's say I want to apply them onto a new layer. So I'm going to quickly make a new layer and I'm going to pick a preset that I like, like autumn colors seems kind of awesome. Yeah, damn, that's actually pretty good. So what it does, it's just going to add the adjustments needed to create that effect to your right hand side panel right here. And you can make any further adjustments if needed or add more layers or less, whatever you want to do. So it is very, very simple to quickly apply the certain amount of a look and then continue, take it from there and adjust it in any way that you like. 
And there you go, very simple editing interface, very simple library interface, but altogether combined, very powerful, and for me at least, definitely a very cool Lightroom alternative that you might want to check out. And that is it, that is all you need to do to use Luminar 3 to import your images, organize them and edit them and export them and publish them and get famous with Luminar 3. I'm obviously exaggerating, but do make sure if you want more information and more keyboard shortcuts and things like that or different workflows to head down to the elaborate article that is listed and linked down there in the description. And that concludes our look into Lumina 3 with libraries, how to get your images into the thing, how to organize them, how to edit them, and then just how to use that thing efficiently. Now, if that sounds great and you want to have your own free version of Lumina 3, here's what you have to do to, well, enter. First of all, you gotta be subscribed, that's a given. So actually, first of all then is share the video on any platform that you see fit or with any person that you see fit and then down there in the comments, tell me with whom or where you shared it. Furthermore, I want to hear the real story behind why you started with the awesome hobby or profession of photography. What brought you into it? What was the kind of key point where you said, yes, that is the exact thing that I love to do in my free time and spend all my dineros into it. Now I'm gonna leave that giveaway open for a couple of weeks and then after a couple of weeks, I'm gonna pick five people out of the comments that have the, well, the coolest stories and obviously I'm gonna choose that and I'm gonna contact them privately to let them know that they won. So, good luck to you all, and I am out of here, and I shall see you next week. Have a good one.